August 30th, 2023, at 11.56 a.m. What? I said, staring incredulously at the disheveled man sitting beside me on the park bench. Gaze affixed to the ground, he reluctantly responded. That's when you're going to die. He sounded exhausted, worn down, defeated. Like a soldier coming home from war after his whole unit was wiped out. That's in two minutes. I don't believe you. Believe what you want, kid. It makes no difference to me. He glanced up at me, dark purple bags hanging low under his sullen gray eyes. I will, I said, standing to leave. I had taken no more than two steps when something massive crashed down behind me. I gasped, spinning on my heels. An enormous tree branch lay on the park bench, exactly where I had been sitting. My eyes grew wide as dinner plates and my heart began to palpitate wildly in my chest. He was right. You're welcome, the man said, brushing stray leaves from his suit as he stood. He turned to walk away as I grasped for words. How the... The man's shoes clacked against the pavement as he laughed, snapping me from my stupor. I trotted up next to him. A million questions joggled around in my brain all at once. But one rose to the forefront of my mind. How did he know? So, um, thanks for saving me. Uh, don't mention it, he said, without sparing me a passing glance. How did you do that? And do what? Oh, come on, you know what I'm talking about. How did you know that I was going to die? And the man stopped in his tracks, turning to face me. He locked eyes with me, sending a chill rippling through my body. Look, kid, I've had this uh, ability ever since I was a child. It's a curse and it's ruined my life. Be glad that you don't have to bear this burden. I stared behind him, pondering his statement. I don't think it would be that bad. It might be nice to know when people are going to die so that you can stop it, like you did with me. The man paused, his eyes lighting up as he looked down at me. You would actually want this. Yeah, I don't think that I would mind. I admitted, shrugging my shoulders. Alright kid, I'll make you a deal. I'll transfer my power to you. I get a free conscience and you gain the ability to, um, help as you see it. But I only do this on one condition, he said, a smug grin tugging at the corners of his lips. I cocked an eyebrow. There it was, the catch. What, are you going to ask for my soul or something? If that's the case, then no deal. Oh no, nothing major like that. I just want something small, inconspicuous, barely even worth mentioning. My condition is that you can't transfer the power back to me under any circumstances. That's all. A sense of relief washed over me at his revelation. Why didn't you just say that in the first place? Of course I'll do it, I said, motioning to shake on it. I'm glad that we were able to come to an agreement. The man grabbed my hand with a ferocity that I hadn't known possible. Every muscle and tendon exploded with pain. I tried to yank my hand from the man's grip, but he was too strong. Why are you doing this? I stuttered as that awful sensation spread like wildfire to the rest of my body. It's not up to me. Think of it as a down payment for the transfer. And the man's visage glowed with pure elation as I dropped to the floor, thrashing violently, desperate to free myself from the absolute torture that I was being subjected to. My whole body ached, every cell in my system screaming in agony. I remember wondering if I was going to die. And then everything went black. I awoke to something scratchy poking me in the face. I groggily leaned up, rubbing my eyes. Were you dead? A boy no older than five was standing over me holding a stick. A kid, a lovely. Uh, nope, just tired, so I took a nap. Where's your mom, buddy? I asked, brushing away the rocks and dirt that clung to my arms. Oh, she's over there, he said, 
pointing to a woman in a lavender cardigan sitting atop the same bench that I had almost died on. But you're a weirdo, he continued, much to my dismay. And she doesn't let me talk to weirdos. Bye. And with that, he darted away. Normally, I'd be happy to be left alone. But as I watched the boy run away, my heart plummeted into my stomach. Because a date suddenly flashed across my mind. December 18th, 2029. And that meant the transfer had worked. But it also meant that the boy only had six years to live. Well, this isn't going to be easy. I gradually mustered up the courage to do the right thing. I shuffled up to the woman, anxiously mulling over the words in my mind. I knew that I was going to sound insane, but what else could I do? If I had the chance to save a life, then I needed to seize the opportunity. The woman gave me the once-over as I stood, scanning me up and down like she was a TSA agent, sending me through a metal detector. Um, I know this is going to sound strange, but um, I can see when people are going to die. Your son's is December 18th of 2029. I just felt like I needed to say something. You know, in case there is a way to prevent it. The woman glared at me as she stood, dramatically snatching her purse. You're right, it does sound strange, and quite frankly, I think you belong in the loony bin. Stay away from me and my son. I grappled for something, anything to say as she furiously marched away. But I kept getting distracted by the number blaring in my mind the entire time that I had been talking to her. September 25th, 2074. I glanced at the boy as his mother hurriedly ushered him to the parking lot. I breathed a sigh of relief. December 16th, 2089. I had done it. Mission accomplished. Or so I thought. I began walking through the park to return home, ready to plop down on my bed and take a much needed nap. I was beat. As I continued on, I passed a number of people soaking in the golden afternoon sun. A soccer team practicing their shooting drills. Two preteen girls racing on their bikes. An elderly couple watching the dogs. I knew when they were all going to die. Dates began attacking my brain like angry hornets. February 10th, 2078. November 24th, 2056. March 19th, 2024. I couldn't stop them and they flooded my conscience, swarming my thoughts relentlessly. And it was driving me insane. I sprinted the rest of the way home, staring at the ground the entire way. I had made a huge mistake. I needed to figure out how to ditch my newfound ability before I lost my mind. But how? Hey, Steven, how was the park? Mom asked as I trudged through the door. It was fine. I lied, averting my gaze. Is everything okay? You're pale, Steven. Look at me. My heart began to thud against my chest like a jackhammer. I really, really didn't want to, but I was going to have to face mom eventually. I would have to deal with it sooner or later. Blood pounded in my ears as I lifted my head. Time seemed to move in slow motion as I begrudgingly glanced up. I was beginning to think that it wouldn't come, but it did. August 6th, 2065. I released the breath that was caught in my throat as unbridled alleviation coursed through my veins like a drug. Mom was going to live to be 81. I'm fine, Mom, I promise. I'm just tired as all. I'm going to go take a nap. All right, honey, Mom said, a tinge of suspicion percolating her words. But don't sleep too late. Dinner will be ready in a few hours. I flashed her a thumbs up as I disappeared upstairs. I pushed open the bathroom door, turning on the faucet. I splashed a handful of cold water in my face. Why did I think that any of this would be a good idea? I mean, the man literally told me that this ability had ruined his life. My head began to spin. I needed to get a grab. I locked eyes with my reflection. All the color suddenly drained from my face. I nearly passed out, grabbing the shower rod for support. I knelt to the toilet, spewing vomit into the bowl. It's been two hours since then and I'm terrified to my core. 
because every time I see my reflection, the date December 2nd, 2023, it won't stop flashing in my head.